Art Bryles. We talked about it on last week's show, and this week it is official. As of now, Art Bryles is the offensive coordinator for Grambling State University. And, you know, this is uh, what I find interesting about this, and we don't have to, you know, go into whether or not we think it was a good idea because we both agreed last week that it is a good hire if they got it done. But when it comes down to it, what I have been most surprised about is the amount of media that are not even willing to give this thing a second look not willing to to even give any thought to it and just immediately bash anybody that thinks that it's a good idea. I, I was shocked at all of the people online, and mostly in Twitter and message boards and whatnot, that are so against this and, and not willing to look at what the facts of this case were. What, what's your well, opinion that's on this? The problem is none of, none of them ever paid attention to a single fact of the case. They watch news media and they listened to the hype of the ESPN crushed Baylor, and, and Baylor had a successful situation going on that was campus-wide. I, I, I've been through this case multiple times on this show. I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of it. Art Browles is not completely blameless, but he at no way, sure, no possible way could he be the scapegoat of this. It's just not possible. And, just and yet not. he was he was made the scapegoat by, or scapegoat by Baylor, and they, I mean, they paid him. They paid him out to be that. But, so. but it wasn't just he was made the scapegoat by Baylor. He was also blacklisted. The president, the chancellor, everybody else involved didn't get blacklisted. They all got to move on from Baylor, and they all got other jobs. They all got second chances at life. Art is the only one that, for some reason, everybody just drew a line in the sand and said, he was the head coach, can't happen, he'll never work again. And I just think that's insane because you didn't, read any of the cases you didn't look into any of the things that actually happened you're just headline warriors and shame on you shame on all of you for wanting a man's life to be completely ruined because you're too lazy to read facts i tend to agree with you i agree with you uh did you see the pictures of him by the way no i haven't seen a picture of him since he grew out he dyed his hair blonde when he was coaching high school and had the blonde mullet well, that's that's what he's got going on right now. He's got so like he still a still got the blonde mullet. That was what two years ago. <laughs> yes, that's it a is... ballsy move for a sixty-year-old man. I'm just going to tell you, the he... nuts on a guy like that, <laughs> boy. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't want him to coach for me just for that factor alone. Like, yeah. you got to be a ballsy some bitch to have a haircut like that as a sixty-something-year-old man. He looks like a just a straight villain right now. He's he's got like a straight a, what. A villain, like a, like a yeah. evil, you know, whatever. It's it is crazy it, baby. to look at. Uh, Where it? <laughs> do do your thing, uh, but I do think that Grambling State will be a better football team having him on the sideline uh, as their offensive coordinator. I, so I also think this is the road to to redemption. I do, okay. I do, I do believe that at some point in time he's going to do really good things there, and then that's go. And somebody has to talk about it. You can't ignore it once he starts doing good things. And then somebody in in one of these other conferences will give him a shot at even an OC job. And that's what, I'm not asking him to be the head coach. I'm not listen. If he can't be trusted to make those kinds of decisions at a top head level, then he needs to go work for somebody else. That's fine. If that's but to keep him away from major college football when he's the most qualified person out there is just beyond me. You can't do that. You know he should be able to be one of these big time OCs, and nobody should say boo about it. Just stay the hell away from Tuscaloosa, and I'll be fine. <laughs> of course, that that blonde hair bullet would fit right in with all the trash in Tuscaloosa. Other than that, you are you, so you're ridiculous. Just, you're good. You're good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.